Daniel chapter 2, again, just as a segue here to what we're doing as well, there will be a lot more verses to come and better understanding here. But this this message is, is going to be UFOs, Aliens, and Aleister Crowley. So now if you weren't here for the first one, you're probably going to think, what in the world are you talking about? So so we talked about, let's pray and then we'll get into it. I'll, I'll do a little bit of background for you. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We pray you'd bless us now. Help us to understand the truth of it, Lord. Help us to search out these matters from the scriptures and say, what does the Bible say about it, Lord? And that's what really matters. That's all that matters is what the Word of God says. But Lord, we do have history before us. We do have things before us that, have, that we've seen and, and, and record and, and people that bear witness of what's really going on and people's own testimony of what they, what they say. And it's amazing how God's Word reproves and shows the truth in all those things. Help us to receive it today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, UFOs, aliens, and Aleister Crowley. We talked about earlier. Uh, we, we, there's this there's this whole rise of people being very concerned with aliens. Like, what are there really aliens? Are there UFOs? Well, I happen to believe that some of these things that are called UFOs are real. Um, I, I don't I don't think they're aliens. I think they're angels. I think they're fallen angels. Some are working for the beast, Satan. Others, are, others uh, I believe, are, are for the Lord. But I'm going to show you that in the Scripture, probably the third hour. Uh, maybe. We'll see. I'm not sure yet. But uh, if I'm ready for that at all yet, but we'll see. Uh, whatever the Lord leads here. But, um, what, but what, what we do understand is there's a fourth dimension. That's what I shared with you earlier. The fourth dimension. Now, that fourth dimension is where God is. It's called the height in Scripture. You can study that. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ was a fourth dimensional. He's a fourth dimensional being. He's God, obviously. And he walked on water, which is, which, which is three dimensional. And, but a fourth dimensional being is not, is not bound by, by th- the third dimension. So he can walk on water. Jesus could do all those things. Devils uh, or fallen angels can do those things that we can't do. Okay, why? Because they, they live in a different dimension. So, uh, you know, understand that that's where this is coming from. So what is, what is, what is Aleister Crowley and what, is, what are aliens and UFOs? What does that all have to do with the fourth dimension? Well, occultists have always sought to reach that fourth dimension, what we would call the spirit world, or what the Bible calls the height. It also talks about the north, but we're not going to talk about that today, that there's an army that's going to come out of the north. And and it gives a lot of there, there there's so much there to that and I was going to add that to this study but I decided not to because it would go long but uh, longer but uh, the the north is another topic altogether and uh, here's a hint it's not a Chinese army um, of of mean little scorpions or whatever it's it's not it's it's a real army that the Bible talks about it's a spiritual it's spiritual and anyway we're not going to get to that but that's what it is and we'll talk about that later this all ties in. Uh, It'll make sense here in a few minutes here. But we understand that there's a kingdom that shall arise. Well, why are all these things happening? Why, why, why the rise of, of this, this speaking of, of another dimension, of another world, of, of making contact? Why, why is that? Why is all those things talked about so much? Well, that's because the final kingdom that will be on this earth before the Lord comes, amen, is the fourth kingdom. And Daniel chapter 2, I've talked to you about this before, but Daniel chapter 2, And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay, part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it the strength of iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. Okay, we, we know that there's the big, that Jesus is going to come, the stone made without hands, and he's going to come and he's going to, he's going to take care of the final kingdom eventually. Amen? We also understand that the Bible says they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall cleave, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Who's they? Well, this world would have you to believe that they are aliens. Now, they don't say it's a fourth kingdom. By the way, the number four, is is a spiritual thing. We see in Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible talks about those four spiritual battles that were in the principalities, the powers, the spiritual the wickedness in high places, and the rulers of the darkness of this world. Those are four things. That fourth kingdom is the number four. Again, that four stands for the spirit. The iron are the angels, the chariots, and that's another story. Altogether. It might, we might cover that in the last hour. Um, I'm not sure yet. But anyway, uh, we'll see. Now, but the Bible also says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, that our battle is not flesh and blood, our battle is against the spirit world. If you were saved and God gave you a Holy Ghost, why? Did he give you a Holy Spirit so you could battle in the flesh? 
No. Why? Well, because flesh is flesh. It's going to die. I mean, it's, it's going to... What do they give you the Spirit of God for? So you can battle in the Spirit. Amen. So you, He gave you a new nature and He gave you the Holy Ghost. Why? Because there's this spiritual war out there. And Satan hates the children of God. But some people would have you to believe. So why do you need to preach on aliens? Again, like I said at the beginning, I'm not preaching aliens. I'm preaching on, on, on angels, actually fallen angels. But they, they are called by some aliens. So the, so the reason we preach this and we talk about this is because Satan has found a way to mask himself. He has found a way to myster, mysteriously hide himself. For, and people believe it. They actually believe that there are aliens out there. You have Your government believes it. <laughs> they know the truth, but they believe it. That's why they spend billions and billions of dollars. Um, Project Bluebeam, uh, other other things like that 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 uh, that they spent a lot of money on. Why? Because they believe that Aleister Crowley found something, and he did. And we're going to talk about what he found. Aleister Crowley was a Satanist. Now, I'll have to give you a background of Aleister Crowley just so you can understand how evil and maniacal. Why? Because I want you to see that what's being portrayed as aliens today are nothing more than that reaching that. Aleister Crowley called it the fourth dimension. The Bible calls it the height. It's the spirit world. He didn't, he didn't find aliens. He found fallen angels and devils. That's what he found. That's what he reached. But... Hollywood is run amok with the paranormal. It's, run, it's, it's, it's every movie, every, everything is all talking about a conspiracy that's coming or, or a group of people that are coming that are going to change this world. And he's, they're giving you a perversion of the truth. So, so I want you, when, when people talk about this, you don't just dismiss it and say, oh, aliens aren't real and you, just, you don't have anything to talk to them about. No, what can I tell them? Well, let me show you what the Bible says about that. Let me show you what they are. Let me show you what the Word of God says about that. That these people are contacting devils is what they're doing. And uh, we'll see that here. Well, what is the history of this alien conspiracy? What is, it, what is it really all about? Well, one thing we can see for sure is that Hollywood does not run short of alien encounters. They really don't. Uh, some of the most popular movies are E.T., Aliens versus Predators. I mean, I remember watching uh, some of those before I was saved. I, I watched Aliens. I, man, that thing was goofy looking. That, that, it was just like, man, you, you remember? With, yeah, just very scary. Very, very absolutely horrendous. I mean, it could be nightmares looking at that thing. But uh, E.T., uh, Aliens, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. <laughs> you know, it's funny because you, uh, you can see an airplane in that movie. You know what number the airplane has on it? 33. Why? Why would they have Satan's number, favorite number right there? Oh, it's just accident. By the way, if you walk through that movie, it's all occultic. I'm, I don't, I'm not telling you to watch it. Don't. It's wicked. But, but if, you, if you watch it, it's all occultic. Everything they're doing, they are, do, they, they are explaining how... People interact with devils. That's just what they're doing. The first contact, the fact that, the, the, I mean, just all of it. And, and, and by the way, how come every single alien movie has to come in with an encounter of an alien coming in and impregnating a lady? And then a, a, a child comes from that? Yes. A child comes from that and it's a hybrid child? That's really strange. Why is it? Because that's the fourth kingdom, that's why. That is what happened before, and it's going to happen again. So they're just, they're just telling you it happened. It's the sons of God, the daughters of men, all over again. It's the fourth kingdom. What are they doing? They're giving you a perversion. They're saying that somebody's going to come from on high. They're going to be a super spiritual being, and they're going to have superpowers, like Superman. And they're going to come, and they're going to find a lady, and they're going to have a child. And that child is going to be a hybrid of iron mixed with clay. Pretty easy. Sons of God, daughters of men. As is above, so is below. Same occultic teaching, same thing. But see, here's the thing. 
they're pushing this in front of everybody constantly and feeding them. So what I'm going to do is just open up the mystery and just tell you the truth, what it really is. It's the devil. It's the devil. It's Satan. He's trying to hide himself in aliens, in, in, in hybrids, and all that. He's just trying to, he is the master of manipulation. He's the master at hiding himself. So God called us to just reveal the mystery. No, it's the same old devil working a different way, but the same old devil. Same old wicked thing. God already told you why. So you would take your authorities from the scriptures. You would say, you know what? God already told me the devil was going to do this. It's all predicted in the Word of God. They're preparing you for a kingdom. That's what they're doing. All these movies are to prepare you. First contact. Every movie seems to be about making contact with an alien. Making contact. We must make contact with the intelligent beings from another world. Man of steel, man of sin. Right? Coming from above, coming from another world, iron mixed with clay. Iron Man, same thing. The new RoboCop movie, what is it about? Taking a human being, taking a human I, I watched RoboCop when I was a kid back in the 80s. Um, well, taking a human being, and mixing them with a the machine. But only this machine has a heart. Same story. Trying to make that perfect man, the world, another world mingling its seed with the seed of man and becoming a god. Why? So man, all these aliens, all about man achieving godhood. I will ascend above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. Evolution is its doctrine. Evolution is its doctrine. I do not need God. I have evolution. That's Satan's doctrine. The ascension of man. Satan's doctrine. What is it? That's the final way where man can ascend to Godhood. That's what the fourth kingdom is about. That's what, the, that's, that's what they are teaching you. That's what they are showing you from the Word of God. Uh, what we see from the Word of God, we see that truth. They are showing you in a perversion of that. Satan always masks and shows a perversion of that. God is showing just a little bit different to get you off of God. To get you away from the Bible. Yea, hath God said. Satan never denied God's existence. Well, he's, he's not stupid enough to do that. He knows nobody, he knows that Eve wouldn't have believed him. What did he do? He perverted it. Yea, hath God said? Perverting the written word of God by speaking. Yes, he is. Well, when did all this start? What's their goal? Their goal is to prepare the earth for the coming of that kingdom. That's what they're doing. Folks, people watch these movies. They spend, America spends billions and billions of dollars a year on movies. And they sit around all day and go, click, 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 click. What are they doing? Meanwhile, their subconscious is just taking all that stuff in. And then when Satan comes with his fourth kingdom, when that Antichrist comes, they'll just follow him. Why? Because their subconscious has been trained for it. I believe this is part of the strong delusion that God is sending. I believe it. I believe God is sending strong delusion. I believe it's starting. Now, I'm not putting a date on anything. I'm just telling you, I believe that this is the start of it, that God is allowing it to happen. I believe that. Now, that could be hundreds of years. I'm just telling you, I believe God is allowing that to happen. Where did the gray aliens start with Hollywood? Where, where, where did, why did it start? Why did all of a sudden they start... In movies, you start seeing these gray aliens. You know what a gray alien is? Anybody know what that is? Oh, 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 I got my own. I put it in a special folder. There we go. Okay, well, this... I don't mean to scare you. It's not that scary. It just looks like he's got a big head. It's like a light bulb with eyeballs, doesn't it? Light, light bulb with eyeballs, right? I'm not listening to you. I'm preaching. <laughs> See that? See that back there? Looks kind of like Brother Andrew. See? Right, brother. That's what you get for being late, brother. <laughs> You're not late. I just started preaching five minutes ago. 
He knows me too well. <laughs> He's like, don't worry, we won't miss a thing the way this guy is. <laughs> like, Pastor Cooley will just be getting started. He probably hadn't prayed yet. But uh, anyway, well, now I want to show you this. That looks similar, doesn't it? Kind of? Can you see that all the way back there? That looks similar, doesn't it? Can you see it or no? Do you see how it looks similar? Pretty close. Smaller eyes, a little bit smaller, but same design, right? Did you see the other one? Okay. Brother Joe, can you see that? Okay. This is what Aleister Crowley saw and drew before anybody had ever heard of the gray alien. Back in the 1915s. This is what he drew. Now, I'm going to tell you who that is in a little bit. Not yet. Brother Russ, you don't get extra credit for speaking. You be quiet. Brother Russ could have preached the other half of my sermon already. but the, What are you laughing about? That's right. Amen, brother. Amen. All right. Well, anyway, Aleister Crowley drew that. Now, I'm going to tell you who that is in a little while and what he said that was. We have to go back, and I, I, I'm going to, have to tell you about this guy, okay, so you understand his impact on Hollywood. Because, see, what we just think is, well, I mean, there's just independent people, and they just make movies, and they just throw these things up here. And there's really not that same spirit. No, it's the same spirit all the way through. It's the same. It comes from the same fountain, okay? It's all the same. It's a conspiracy to conspire against God. And television has been used to do that. It's been the mode and the means used to do that. Satanists agree with that. They, they, they tell you that. They, uh, Anton LaVey said that. So anyway, I, I just want you to see this, okay? Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4. You might say, well, I don't watch TV or I don't watch those kind of movies. No, but your friends do. I guarantee your family does. They do. They see it. People you know do. People that you and I are going to come in contact with on the street and preach and everything else, they're going to ask you questions like this. They're going to ask you about that. What, what do you believe about all this aliens and all this other stuff? Now, most preachers say, oh, that's not real. Just whatever. Don't talk about that. No, you're to be ready to give an answer from the Word of God. And, I, and I'm going to give you one today. But first, I've got to give you a little bit of background. So you're going to have to bear with me a little bit. I'm going to tell you some things about this man that isn't fun. But it's going to explain to you where this came from. Okay? Where this spirit came from. Listen, remember, I'm not looking for, for all the actors in Hollywood, Tom Cruise and all those other guys. I don't care who they are. You could just put another face there. You could put another name there. That doesn't matter. I'm trying to teach you that these people have the same spirit. It's the spirit of the devil. And that's what they're doing. That's what their plan is to deceive. And they're doing it to the masses. Because you have people that spend millions and millions of dollars on researching aliens. And billions of dollars your government does. And your government knows what it really is. They, they, they know. That's right. They, they know exactly what's going on. But your money is being wasted on it. Well, it's, it's being more than wasted. It's being used to do some wicked things. But anyway... First uh, Timothy chapter four verse number one tells us this. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Again, I've told you this before, but I think you better listen when the Spirit of God says that. That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So there is a seducing, there are seducing spirits out there that seek to seduce away from the truth. Wow, I'm just getting started too. Um, that, that, uh, that seek to seduce away from the truth, that to draw men away, the Bible says, from the truth. That's, that's what the Bible says. Now, who is this man, Aleister Crowley, and why, why is he so popular? Why do people know so much about him? And what is his influence? On even Christianity, on Bible, on people that claim to be Christians and 
they're still being entertained by a lot of Aleister Crowley's things today. Anyway, long about 1920, the rise of interest by the occult in making contact with the spirit world was popularized. Crowley was a pedophile and a fornicator and a Satanist. Now, this would make him a perfect, this, this would make him in perfect need, uh, for the government to use. So they hired him as a secret agent. Makes sense. Makes sense that they would hire a pedophile. You mean they hired a man that was a pedophile? Not, surely not the government of Britain. Or United States. They sure did. Ozzy Osbourne. You ever heard of Ozzy Osbourne? Heavy metal. Sang his song, Mr. Crowley. Brother Joe, you've heard that song before, Mr. Crowley. That was Aleister Crowley. He was singing to him. The Beatles have Aleister Crowley. On their album cover. Come on. I mean, what's wrong with having... The, the Beatles got up and said they, 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 they weren't warned against Jesus. Yeah, that's why they put the, 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 the man that called himself the Beast, 666, on the cover of their album. Come on, preacher. Don't preach against rock and roll and all that stuff. Come on. Why bring that to light? Because it's all satanic. Because it's all a satanic conspiracy. And we're actually have a debate whether, whether it was right for Rick Warren to sing Purple Haze on his stage at, uh, Saddle, was it Saddleback or Saddleback? Probably Brokeback Mountain or something. Anyway, that's, 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 uh, I, don't, I think he's a queer anyway, but it, I, I, I'm sorry, whatever. I, I, I have no respect for those high priests. I have no, none whatsoever, high priest of the New World Order. So you can get as mad at me as you want to, but I'm going to call a dog a dog, and that's exactly what they are. They are seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, drawing men away to hell is what they're doing. So if you expect me to respect any of those people, I don't respect them. I preach against them and loathe them for what they do. They're evil. That's right, they're working for their master. Well, oh, by the way, Rick Warren and those guys come out too and say this. Today, they say, uh, 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 oh, I'm not sure about homosexuals going to heaven. I think you ought to lighten up on the homosexuals. A few days ago, a week or two ago, something like that. Well, let, let's understand something, okay? Uh, and I'm not trying to preach on him. I'm going to preach on something later. But Rick Warren works for Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch is a member of the Knights of Malta. Enough said. Maybe you don't understand that. It's a cult. It's all Masonic. It's all, I mean, it's all the same mystery religion. And Rick Warren does, and so does Glenn Beck, by the way. Glenn Beck works for Rupert Murdoch, too, um, or did, and I think they still have a relationship anyway. So so th these guys are all trying to bring people into the New Age. Anyway, I'm going to keep going. Um, but, by the way, Crowley has a lot to do with all that. But Crowley also practices his own form of magic that is spelled with a K. He has his own form of magic that he used. Crowley was a secret agent for the British government. He worked in American with the Italian government. He was a Rosicurian and a cult follower. He dealt with all aspects of witchcraft. Aleister Crowley initiated to the highest levels of Freemasonry and high priest of the Golden Dawn. Said a, he said this, a white male child of perfect innocence and intelligence makes the most suitable victim. Now, see, let, let me tell you something. You say, why don't you know this stuff? Well, you don't if you're going to go home and not engage the world in the truth. You don't. Just go home and go to sleep. But if you're going to be out there and you are going to fight a spiritual warfare, then you've got to know some things. You've got to understand, yeah, that's right, you better know your enemy and know what's going on. You better have a good understanding of it. By the way, I hope your children learn from this to hate rock and roll music, to hate the devil's work, to hate everything that is a part of that, and to damn it to hell. That's what I hope they get from this. I hope that they understand that, because I don't want them to think that I'm leaving any stone unturned when it comes to wickedness, so you can know what to hate and choose the good. You have to teach children that, by the way. You don't teach it from just hiding them and saying, well, I won't tell them any bad thing in the world. Well, when they go out in the world, they're going to engage in those bad things because they're curious. Well, I'm going to let the mystery out of the bag. It's wicked. It's satanic. It's wrong. 
There's wicked people out there, and they want to hurt you. They hate what your parents stand for. They hate the Word of God. They hate it all. Open it up. Let them know about it. You don't have to tell them every intricate, deep, dark detail. I'm not saying that. What I, and by the way, I'm not going to read you every dark detail either because it gets really sick. But you can understand where this all comes from. Where it comes from. During the World War, Crowley transferred his activities to America. The press proclaimed him the wickedest man in the world. I'd just like to be known as the wickedest man in the world. He was proud of that, by the way. He also spent time in Italy, but was expelled because of Italian authorities accused his disciples of sacrificing human infants in occult rituals. According to one source, Crowley resided in the Abbey of Thelema near Sicily and revived the ancient Dionysian ceremonies. Most of Crowley's adult life was dedicated to indulging in everything he believed God would hate. So what does it have to do with aliens? It has a lot to do with it. It has a whole lot to do with it. Because it's all satanic. It all comes from one stream. It's a trick that's being played on people. And they're falling for it. Well, I'll just get them saved. First, you've got to be able to answer their questions when they come to you and they talk to you about it. You see, I've heard preachers say there's such things as saved agnostics so they can go on and believe evolution and still be saved. You're denying the Word of God. How could you be saved? You're denying. You don't believe God then. So think about it. <clears throat> You ever wonder why some of the children that you grew up with aren't serving God anymore and they like rock and roll music and they go watch dirty movies and they do all that? I'm going to tell you why. Because nobody told them the dangers of it. That's why. He just said, don't do it. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Why? Why? Why don't do it? Because the father of it is the devil. That's why. And teach them and explain it to them. That's right. Most of Crowley's adult life was dedicated to indulging in everything he believed God would hate. He performed what he called, I'm going to use the term fornication magic because it's a better term than the one that's used here. But that's what he performed. Taking heroin, opium, hashish, peyote, cocaine, invoking spirits, and even offering himself to the Russian authorities to help destroy Christianity. He wrote volumes of books that he believed were dictated to him by a spirit from ancient Egypt called Awas. By the way, he, he did get dictated to by spirits, just like Hollywood does. Just like, so the next time somebody asks you that, well, why don't you watch these movies? Why don't you? Because they're dictated by demons. They're doctrines of devils. No, I just want to go back and hide in my bubble and not be scared of anything and not learn anything. Ignorance is bliss, but it's not reality. You better wake up. I'm telling you, there's some people that are not going to be prepared for the spiritual warfare that's coming on this earth. You better wake up and get ready. And understand it's real out there. This bubble that we live in America of protection is not the same all over the world. And this bubble is fastly getting popped. It's happening. It's happening quickly. Richard Dawkins comes out and says that pedophilia, mild pedophilia is okay. Well, mild pedophilia is not a big deal. So why does that matter to me? Richard Dawkins is a pusher of evolution. He's one of the the God deniers. And your public school is flooded with that. I just, folks, you gotta, you gotta start understanding. We gotta engage this thing. If you think protecting your family means that you don't know anything, you're foolish. Amen! You're foolish! They need to understand what's going on. You need to explain. Well, I don't want to be scared. I do. I want to run to God. I want them to find their hiding in God. Let Him cover them. Is this going to be important in the time to come?
What was Aleister Crowley? What did he say? He said, to worship, to worship me, take wine and strange drugs is what this God told him. The Spirit conveniently told him, lust, enjoy all things of sense and rapture. Fear not that any God shall deny thee for this. That's what the Spirit's told him. He began torturing and killing animals at the age of 12. He was a heroin addict and a pervert. His Christian mother referred to him as the great beast of the Revelation, whose number is 666. And he was pleased with the title. He was convinced that he was the reincarnation of the magician Eliphaz Levi, who died a year the year Crowley was born. Crowley also believed he had lived other lives, including that of Pope Alexander the Sixth. Crowley claimed that dark powers gave him the words of his book of the law. His first wife, Rose, died in a mental asylum. I can understand why. His second wife also went insane. Five mistresses committed suicide. And scores of concubines ended in the gutter as alcoholics, drug addicts, and mental institutions. This is a very wicked man. He said this about Christianity. That religion they call Christianity, the devil they honor, they call God. I accept these definitions as a poet must do. If he is to be at all intelligible at his age... To his age, and it is their God and their religion that I hate and I will destroy. So you say about God. I, I sincerely wish that you and I took our God as seriously as he took his. You know, he was all in. <laughs> Whatever the devil wanted him to do, he did. How come we that are saved that have the Spirit of God that dwell in us, how can we have to get how, how can we have to question whether we're going to do something for God or not? We gotta sit there and on the well, I don't know if I want to give that up. I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. I mean I I don't know if I can handle that or I, I don't know I don't know if I really? Yeah, I guess eternal life isn't worth much these days, is it, to God's people? Boy, they were they it was important to them. It was important to these. Aleister Crowley is the occultist and Satanist that is perhaps the most well-known. His works, the book of the law, sound familiar? Magic and theory and practice in the book of Thoth are broadly used in occultic circuits. Crowley himself didn't take much credit for having written them as he stated they were written by automatic handwriting being channeled from a higher being. But Joe, you've heard of that automatic handwriting, right? You know what that is? That means you put your... That's what Michael Landon did when he got the scripts for The Doss on the Prairie. He said the spirits just gave it to him. He just put his hand on it. He said he got it from the being called Awa, Awas. I think that's how you pronounce it. This being said, he lived in Chaldea during the reign of Hammerberus in 1750 B.C., but later in his book Magic and Theory and Practice... Crowley identified him. He was actually very proud of his book, which he used as a Bible of his own religion. Crowley looked at man as, as, as a sleeping God who gradually started to understand that what power he possessed. He also taught that Satan was identical with the Sumerian devil, Shaitan, and he stated that being worshipped in Egypt, deserts long before the ages of the pharaohs. He's telling you the truth. That's what they believed. Mm-hmm. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Is geared toward the achievement of a world-spanning empire. The law, do what thou wilt, is the law of the new state of the one world government. That was his motto, which was the secret order he himself was the grandmaster of. He rejected traditional morality in favor of the life of a drug addict and a brutal womanizer. He said, I rave, I rip, I rend. He even enjoyed being called the wickedest man in the world. People who met Crowley verified that he had occult powers. As an example, well, yeah, by the way, Satanists are real. I don't know if you know that or not, but they're real. You wouldn't know that from your average fundamental Baptist preacher, though, that acts like they're not. 
Never preach on the doctrine of Satan. Never teach about them. Never, you ever wonder why you have some spiritual battles? Or you're down? Or you're depressed? Or you're, you, you ever wonder at anything? And none of your preachers ever tell you that, you know, it's probably a spiritual problem. You have probably the devil attacking you. Could be from that spirit world. Could be that attack from the devil and, 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 and spirits that hate what you're doing for God. So maybe you need to get some strength and get into prayer and get in the Word of God and start reading. Start studying, start praying, start asking for God. No, it must be depression. Go take some Xanax. Be fine. What they tell you? People that met Crowley verified that he had occult powers. And as example, William Seabrook tells the following story: Seabrook wanted a demonstration of Crowley's powers, so the so the latter chose a man by random out on the street and followed him, imitating his walk. Watch this. Suddenly, Crowley fell but was rapidly on his feet again. And at the same time, the other man fell on the sidewalk. Crowley and his companion helped the man up, but he looked confused trying to find the banana peel. He couldn't figure out how he fell. What happened? Well, Crowley said, watch this. You don't believe I have any power? So a man was walking towards him, and he goes, watch. And he fell, and that man went. He didn't even know that man. Alistair Crowley was born in Warwickshire, where he revolted against a strict religious childhood. He left his studies and became initiated in the secret order of the Golden Dawn in 1898. After some time, he came into conflict with its leaders and went to Mexico. From there, he traveled a lot to India and Ceylon, where he studied yoga and Buddhism. Uh Uh-oh. Buddhism replaced his occult interest for a while until he got a strange experience in Cairo, Egypt in 1904. By curiosity, his wife Rose asked him to do an occult ritual. She then went into a state of trance and brought down a message from some strange being. He's waiting for you, she told Crowley. Him, she said, was Horus, the god of wars, and the son of Osiris, the old Egyptian mythology. Sorry, no new story. Same old one. Same working. Same devil. Still working. Oh, you don't need to know about that. Just don't worry about that. I think so, huh? There'll be a lot of people deceived. I'm going to tell you that. A lot. They are deceived now. You've got radio talk show hosts that stand up for liberty and they're pushing a Masonic. They're pushing a Masonic agenda. And Christians are listening to them like crazy and eating up every word they say and not analyzing everything they say by the Word of God. This liberty movement can easily slip into what? Prophets of the New Age. And that's exactly what it's doing. But you know what? I'm not following any of those guys over the cliff. I'm following the Word of God. And I'm going to believe the Bible. You don't think it's real. Listen, there's a lot of Christians that are waking up and understand that the, that the libertarian issues are right. But they're, but some people are following another spirit. And there's going to be another spirit. that Satan has his conspiracy. And he's hiding things. You've got preachers out there that preach the opposite message. Or not preachers, but people out there that preach the opposite message. That old Superman was a picture of Christ. I heard it. I heard it with, their own, with my own ears. Listen, the occult wants to wants to detract you from the truth. They want to get as many people mystified as they can. Why? They're covering for someone. Who? Satan. At first, Crowley didn't believe her, so he started asking her a few questions to reveal her as a fraud. But Rose, who didn't know very much about the occult, gave the correct answer. The message that was sent to Crowley told him to sit down by his desk A certain time, three days in a row, he obeyed. In these three days, he wrote the book of the law with automatic writing. This means his hand was moving by another force than his own. Do you believe that? I'm just curious. Do you believe that to be true? Do you believe it? Well, I believe the Bible says... For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. I also believe that Satan mimics everything that God does. And all of these people claim to get have a spirit that comes to them. It's a familiar spirit. It's not really who they say it is. Like Michael Landon said it was his father. No, it wasn't his father. It was a familiar spirit. 
He was just telling them he was his father. I want to read you this so you understand. Oh, by the way, some of you know Masons, right? You know people that are in the Masonic Order? I want to read you something. I wonder if they'd like to be associated with this, because they are if they're a Mason, by the way. Uh, Know ye that the undersigned sovereign grand inspectors general do hereby certify and proclaim all illustrious brother Alistair Crowley of London to be an excellent master mason, secret master, royal master, intimate secretary, provost and judge, intendant of the building. What building? (laughs) Elect of nine, elect of 15, sublime knight, elected grand master architect. Ancient Master of the Royal Arch. Uh oh. Grand Elect. You know what the Royal. I haven't taught you in Freemasonry. You know what the Royal Arch is, though, don't you? Okay. Between the pillars. Yeah. Grand Elect, Perfect and Sublime Mason, Knight of the Temple, Prince of Jerusalem, Knight of the East and West. Prince of Jerusalem. Is that rich or what? Knight Rose of Herodom, Grand Pontiff. Master Advenum, Patriarch Noachite, Prince of Labanius, Chief of the Tabernacle, Prince of the Tabernacle, Knight of the Brazen Serpent. Man, can you get any more occultic than this? It just keeps getting deeper and deeper. Prince of Mercy, Commander of the Temple, Knight of the Sun, Knight of St. Andrew, Grand Elect Knight, Kadosh, Grand Inspector, Inquisitor, Commander. Man, this guy's got a lot of titles. He makes a fundamentalist blush with all these titles. Prince of the Royal Secret, Most Pucent, I guess that's what the word is, Sovereign Grand Inspector General of the 33rd and Last Degree. (laughs) We also command, now listen to this. By the way, you know any Freemasons? Well, their brother's Aleister Crowley. Yeah, isn't that sweet? So if you're a Freemason, you hold the ring. Your brother's Aleister Crowley. He's a Satanist. He's a devil-worshipping, child-sacrificing, pedophilia Satanist. And he's your brother if you're a Mason. We also command all the knights, princes, and sublime masons under our jurisdiction, and we pray all other masons over the surface of the globe to welcome and honor him as sovereign grand inspector general and to give credit to these letters, patent, we have caused to be signed in the margin by our said illustrious brother Alistair Crowley that they admit no other than himself. Signed and delivered by us, Sovereign Grand Inspectors General of the 33rd and last degree, with the seal of our said Supreme Council, affixed in the Valley of Manchester this 29th day of the 11th month, AM 5071, corresponding to the 29th November, AD 1910. So if you're a Mason, then your brother is Aleister Crowley, and you're to obey him. Still think this stuff doesn't matter? Nobody has a friend that's a Mason? Nobody has family that's a Mason? Oh, come on, preacher. Just shut up and keep preaching. Just preach. Just preach another you know, salvation message to save people like all the good fundamentalists do. Don't preach about things that will really wake their eyes up and show them the truth. That they're, that they're actually messing around with devils. Churches that allow Masons into their church. Southern Baptist Convention. Some fundamental Baptists that I know. Let the Masons come in there. Oh, as long as they don't try to traffic in here and tell people about the Masons, it's okay. They can wear their ring and they can do everything else, but as long as they, as long as they don't, okay. Sure. So Crowley, what did he do then? So, so just that's a background of Crowley. So what did he do? Well, Crowley, remember that picture I showed you? I showed you the gray alien first, and then I showed you the second picture that Crowley drew. That's what Crowley made contact with. Crowley called his name Lamb. L-A-M. Lamb. 
kind of a perversion of the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world, huh? Anyway, he, he made contact with Lamb. He drew Lamb, and he said that Lamb gave him everything that he needed to know. Lamb spoke to him. Lamb gave him information. This was the devil from the fourth dimension. This is the contact that was made with that fourth dimension. Aleister Crowley was the one that opened up, so to speak, he opened up a portal to that fourth dimension. He contacted it and contacted this entity named Lamb. He is the man that found the alien that all of Hollywood copies. Now, the government got a hold of Aleister Crowley and wanted to know, well, what did you... You contacted somebody. What did you do? So we want to know. So Aleister Crowley is secret agent 666. And, uh, you know, the government didn't really care if he was a Satanist or not. They, they figured that he contacted aliens, paranormal, and they wanted to know, well, what did you do? And how did you open this gate up? And you need to work for us. So they hired him. Why? Well, just read Psalm 2 and you'll understand why they hired him. Because of the conspiracy. The governments of this earth. A conspiracy against Christ and God. In conventional history alone, Crowley's claims aside to be made for the fact that besides the secret fourfold word, there's that four again, do what thou wilt. Adolf Hitler wrote wholeheartedly adopted many of the central tenets of Liber Al. That's the book that Crowley wrote. Wait a minute. Are you saying that we can trace Aleister Crowley to Adolf Hitler? Yeah, you can. You actually can. Whether or not they, he actually embraced the full law of Thelema as such, there can be no doubt at all that Hitler was aware of the book and probably derived a certain demonic inspiration from it. The third part of the book pertaining to Horus begins. Did you think that this wasn't led under Antichrist what Hitler did? Did you think that that was a, that, 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 that was that there wasn't a spirit behind that? Hitler knew full well and was trying to take over the world just like Napoleon was. And Napoleon had his demon too, his little red man. Oh, come on. He, he only admitted it. He only talked about it. People only heard the voices of it. I'm just, I'm just. See, I believe the devil works, okay? I, I, I don't doubt it. And I know he hates the truth. I think it's a good reason why we can't get anything running around here to broadcast any of these messages. That's really what I, th I believe that. Amen. I do believe that. Why? Because when the mystery is revealed. Understand, this is what Crowley taught in his book, and you see if Hitler taught the same thing. Now let it first be understood that I am the God of war and vengeance. I shall deal hardly with them. I will give you a war engine. With it ye shall smite the peoples, and none shall stand before you. Lurk. Withdraw upon them. This is the law of the battle of conquest. Thus shall my worship be about my secret house. It continues. Mercy let be off. Damn them who pity. Kill and torture. Spare not be upon them. Argue not. Convert not. Talk not over much. Them that seek to entrap thee, to overthrow thee, them attack without pity or quarter, and destroy them utterly. Swift as the trodden serpent, turn and strike. Be thou deadlier than he, drag down their souls to awful torment, laugh at their fear, spit upon them. Crowley himself made no bones about it. He said this, before Hitler was, I am. I'm trying to get you to understand that there's a, that, that, that we are blessed to be Christians and be born again and to have a church, but there's a whole other world out there that hates you. And you wonder why there's this constant battle. Why it seems like, well listen, I promise you, if you go along to get along with the world, you won't have much of a fight. But if you stand up and reveal the truth to people and you tell the truth, you're going to be in the fight of your life. But you can go on back and go into sleepy town and you cannot do nothing for God and not really engage what's going on here. But you just remember one thing. You're disobeying God because he said in Ephesians 6 to take on the whole armor of God and get out there and fight. The only way you fight is with the truth. With the sword of the Spirit. And with the truth. 
Can you believe that? Somebody out of the Diocese State before Hitler was. I am. Okay, let, let me finish here because I, I, I'm almost done here. I didn't realize that, that I was as close to being finished. But anyway, another connection to Aleister Crowley. Now, now bring this down to Hollywood. What's it about? What, what's the gray aliens about? What's it, what's it all about? Now bring it down. Aleister Crowley had a disciple named Jack Parsons. Now, Jack Parsons, he can be seen in a picture with Walt Disney holding up a, a rocket. Remember that? Did I show you that picture where, where Jack Parsons had that rocket and he was holding the rocket up? And, and Walt Disney, maybe I didn't show you, but Walt Disney is standing next to him. Now, I don't know if that just strikes me as odd. But anyway, so there is, anyway, so Jack Parsons had another friend. And his name was L. Ron Hubbard. Anybody know who L. Ron Hubbard is? The father of Scientology, Dianetics. Yeah. What's Hollywood's favorite religion right now besides the Kabbalah, which it's all Kabbalah? Scientology. Oh, okay. Now, watch this. Aleister Crowley is one of his disciples, a self-taught chemist named John or Jack Parsons. Called Jack Parsons the true father of the American rocket. Parsons was the one of the original scientists involved in early rocket technology, specifically the chemical formulations for solid rocket fuel. Isn't it odd how these people are Satanists? It's odd to me. Uh, uh, he, not really, it makes a lot of sense. He also did a great deal of work with jet-assisted takeoffs, thereby allowing an aircraft to take off from shorter runways. The groups he worked with at the California Institute of Technology eventually morphed into Jet Propulsion Laboratory. It is widely known that Parsons was a follower of Aleister Crowley. Crowley was an, uh, an English poet, magician, Satan follower, and member of the Freemasons, high member, ranking order of the Freemasons, 33rd degree Mason, everything. I'm not going to get into that a whole lot. I already talked about that. Anyway, their whole function, Crowley's whole involvement is disseminating beliefs and practices, was, was to teach the spirit philosophy and Satanism, basically. Anyway, Crowley died in 1947. Although he wasn't a musician, he wasn't a musician, probably didn't play his music backwards. Parsons was involved with two rather famous writers, L. Ron Hubbard of Scientology and Robert Heinlein. Hubbard and Heinlein were both friends of Parsons, and they shared his occult interest in magic, as well as inspirations from Crowley and Thelema. That's the order, uh, the, the occult order. Parsons and his group attended to create an incarnation of the goddess Babylon. So what they called it Babylon, okay? What were they trying to do? They wanted to open up the gate of Lamb. They wanted to find out how Aleister Crowley did it, and they wanted to reach into that same world through that, and they wanted to open it up. Why? Because they wanted to reach the fourth dimension. They wanted that spiritual power. Folks, when, when the Word of God is not enough for people, they're going to go searching for something else. You see it in places called churches today, the Church of Scientology, all these other things. If you read their website, it's, it's unbelievable what they say they are. They're nothing more than the mystic religions is all they are. They're occultic. They believe in all these aliens and push all this stuff. Parsons and his group attempted to create an incarnation of the goddess Babylon. The purpose of the Babylon work, working according to Parsons, was to create this entity, thus ushering in the Aeon of Horus. Some argue that this being manifested in the form of the gray alien being, possibly in Roswell, New Mexico. Hanlon's involvement is further supported through Stranger in a Strange Land when the concept of Thelema is illustrated but clear, cleverly coded in the text. See, they mask it and they hide it. They're not telling you that they're... they're did, did you ever hear... Did you ever hear L. L. Ron Hubbard of Scientology explain his relationship or his connection to Aleister Crowley and Jack Parsons? Is it anywhere in there? No. Why? Well, because you would know that gray aliens are nothing more than devils. And aliens are nothing more than devils. So why would they want to make that contact? Then you would know that all this is a satanic plot. All of it's of the devil. It's not of God. You see? That's why they do that. This is what Scientology says. Scientology further holds man to be basically good. And that his spiritual salvation depends on himself. Isn't that great? His fellows and his attainment of brotherhood with the universe. 
Scientology is not a dogmatic religion in which one asks to accept anything, has to accept anything on faith alone. On the contrary, one discovers for oneself that the principles of Scientology are true by applying its principles and observing or experiencing the results. The ultimate goal of Scientology is true spiritual enlightenment and freedom for all. Scientology is very popular in Hollywood. By the way, Scientology is mind control. If you look at Dianetics, what it is, now how would they have figured out mind control? Hmm. Aleister Crowley, Jack Parsons, L. Ron Hubbard. Hollywood. So, what they did with Dianetics, what they would, what they do is they, they take control over somebody's mind through hypnosis. And then they control you. And they control your will. You're giving your will over to another being. That sounds a lot like what you encounter sometimes when your brain shuts down and you, you're feeding it with all that Hollywood garbage. It just goes right in through your subconscious. Yeah, it's a little bit, it's more intense than that though. They actually control your brain there. That's what Scientology is. That's what Dianetics is. That's what it is. Where'd they get it from? Aleister Crowley. Where'd Aleister Crowley get it from? Satan. Lamb. He got it from Lamb. Where'd the gray alien come from? Lamb. So why the alien conspiracy? Satan's plan to deceive. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen, and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So what we have is Satan hiding himself as something else, the master deceiver. He masks himself as an alien. Why? Because the world will not receive Satan like that. If he came and said, I'm Satan, worship me, no one would do it. But it's all a part of this fourth king of the beast. I'm not going to get into that really, because I, I, I believe I'm going to have Brother Russ preach the next hour. But um, I'm not going to get into that, but, but we'll close with this and we're done. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, turn there and then we'll be done. I know I went long, um, but uh, you guys are getting hungry. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him, now listen, this is the plan. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. You see that? All deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But I got some good news for you in the next verse. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, listen to me. We reveal these things. Why? Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which have been taught, whether by word or, or our epistle. 
Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which he hath loved us, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Yeah, it's bad, but it's good for us. It's going to get bad, but it's good for us. Now, where, where's this all? What, now, how do, are there really UFOs? What, what are they seeing? Are people just imagining these things? No, I don't believe so. I believe they are seeing some things. I believe I can show you from the scriptures, and I might get to that on Wednesday. Um, but uh, the Bible talks about some things that come from that fourth dimension that we'll talk about. But anyway, let's pray. Father, 